All right, guys. So now we're walking to the station, and also I forgot to say something, and I forgot what I was gonna say. So hold on, I'll say to him, say to him. Check out this river. <laughs> All right, guys. So I remember what I was gonna say. Uh, we don't have anything booked. We don't have a hotel or Airbnb or nothing booked in the pueblo. And today is Puente. This weekend is Puente. So Puente means like a three-day holiday. So the, the pueblo might be packed. So we might not be able to find a room. We might not be able to find a place to sleep. So we're going to see what happens when we get there. And if anything, I don't know. We'll see. Stay tuned to find out what happens to us, yeah? Stay tuned. All right, guys. So this is how it's going to work. So we got the Civica. I got my Civica. And a metro normally costs 2,500 to get in. So I already swiped it. But we're going to a station Prado, okay? And what needs to happen is we need to get to the bus within 90 minutes. If we're able to get to the bus within 90 minutes and because it's the same transportation, uh, the metro and the bus that kind of linked together, then it's gonna be cheaper price. So the total price will be 4,000 pesos to get to Barbosa. If we don't make it to the bus by 90 minutes, they're gonna charge us the full price of the bus, which I don't know how much that is. It's probably, uh, probably like 3,000 pesos. Mahomet, Nati, el costo total sería como 3,000. El bus normalmente, más o menos. We don't know. We don't know what the total price is, but what we do know is if we get there before 90 minutes is up, we get this kind of price. So we're gonna rush. <laughs> All right, guys, so we're going to Prado Station. I'm gonna show you guys how to get there. Actually, I'll tell you now. When you get to San Antonio, you go towards Nekia, and going towards Nekia, you get off at Prado and then you rush down and you go to a certain spot where the buses are. I'll show you guys when we get there. Stay tuned. Okay, I said 90 minutes. Right now it's 9.33. That gives us an hour and a half to get to Prado Station. Let's see if we can make it. We'll make it. But let's see. Who knows? We never know. All right, stay tuned. All right, guys. So right behind me is La Guia Educa the Education Guide right here. So, that's it. So we talked to her, we asked her, and she told us, no, let's go to Nakia to get the bus, not to Prado. And also, Prado is kind of dangerous, so it's, it's faster to get to go, go by Metro to Nakia and also safer. Okay, so let me explain to you on a bit. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so what I was, what I was saying was we asked the, the tour or the guided education person, the person who helps you get, get around the Metro, basically. And we talked to her, and she told us, go to Nakia Station. And that makes sense, that makes more sense to us as well. I was talking to Nat, they said, why get up in Prado, which is like halfway there, it's best take the metro all the way to Kiev because we because we can get stuck in traffic in the bus, they can, the bus can stop more. Also, Prado is kind of dangerous, so getting up in Prado to get the bus there, you're taking a risk. Going straight to Nakia, you go down, the bus is right there waiting, we use the same Civica, you go. And my point I was trying to make was, we spoke to her in Spanish, I guarantee she didn't speak English. Do you think she speaks English? No, para nada. I guarantee she didn't speak English, so that's why you guys, <clears throat> you guys need to learn Spanish. And check out the school that I recommend. I'll put the link in the pinned comment. That's the best school that I think that they do unlimited online classes and also in person. So check it out, the link, and let me know what you think. Anyways, stay tuned. We're gonna get there. Stay tuned. We got. What time is it? Hold on. It's 9.52. We left at 9.33. That's uh, what, 10, 20, what, 21 minutes? We have an hour and a half to get there. So let's see if we make it. <laughs> All right, guys. So we came from the metro right there. And then we go this way to the right and go to Barbosa. So we have to go through this little line right here. This is exit. Go here. And it says... Barbosa buses. We go this way to the buses. So the bu there's different ways to go to different areas in the, around the city, different pueblos. So this is the exit to go to Barbosa. Anyways, stay tuned. I'll show you the bus. Okay, so it's down this one. This first to the right, this stairs here. Not this way, but here. Let's do it. And there's the bus that says Barbosa right there. Anyways, let me know in the comments what you guys think of this uh, tour getting out of Medellin going to a pueblo. Stay tuned. All right, guys, right here, Barbosa bus. We're getting on, and we use the Civica card. So get your Civica card and fill it up. We got here at 10:12, so we made it within the 90 minutes. So we got the discount. Yes, yes. But it's a packed bus, and I'm not sitting next to Nati. It's not Nati. It's someone else. Stay tuned. We'll make it to Barbosa. Stay tuned. 
Okay, so we made it to Barbosa. We got the bus. It's 11.04. We got here at 11.02. We didn't know that we we're supposed to get off here, but everybody got off, so we got off. So let's go to the main park. And let me show you this real quick. Check out this Willis. Check out this car. That's super cool. Wow. All right. So our plan is to go to the main park and find a hotel to put our stuff because we're going to sleep here tonight. And then we go. So stay tuned. Now we're getting into the Pueblo and we're walking to the main park. We're trying to find the same hotel we stayed at three years ago. Hopefully it's still open. Hopefully it's still in business. So y'all stay tuned and see if we find it. Nancy has a better memory than I do. And she's, she's the one that pointed me in the right direction. There it is. Hotel Noreste. Esa. See or no? See. Si. Let's go see the hotel. Ha. This is the hotel we stayed at three years ago. It's super, super affordable. All right, guys. And it's and it's right here. There's the main park. There's the church. And it's walking straight from the church this way on the right. So if you guys come to Pueblos that don't have Airbnbs, you just get off a bus, go to the hotel, any hotel near the square, and you usually have a room. Stay tuned and see if they have a room. This is the hotel that we're going to try to stay at. Hotel Nordeste de Barbosa. Let's see if they have rooms. So it says reception, fourth floor. We're not sure if this is the fourth floor or we go up. I think it's up. Let's go. So when you come to Colombia, be prepared to climb stairs. All right, guys. So we got the hotel and it was 30,000 pesos uh, to, for the night. So 30,000 pesos, do the conversion. This is the room that we got. And it's kind of funny because, because this is the exact room that we stayed in three years ago. The exact same room. <laughs> Crazy. I think we're the only people in the hotel. Now the guy was kind of, I think I'm a mask, there's nobody here. The guy was kind of very, um, how do you say, abrupt with the way he talks. He was like, do this, do this, do this, give me this, give me this. You know, very, uh, not very friendly. But I think that's like his personality. He should not be in the hus 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 hospitality business at all. I'm thinking he probably owns this place, I'm not sure. But that's his, pers that's his personality. He's just a um, not very friendly person, but deep inside, I'm pretty sure he's friendly. I'm pretty sure he's friendly. But for the price, 30,000 pesos, do the conversion, that's less than 10 bucks a night. And we got this hotel, comes with a beautiful TV that we can watch all kinds of movies, which we're not gonna be using. We got a bed that fits just the two of us. Now, let me sit here so y'all can see how big it is. Two normal average person person bed for two people, you know, so there you go. And we got a chair, we got towels, we got soap, we got the blankets, and we got a bathroom that is the shower, the sink, and the toilet all in one room. No, no partition, so everything will get wet. It's a wet room. So there we go. So now we talked to the gentleman. And after a while, he kind of like friendly up a little bit, be a little bit nicer. He told us which shark we would go to. So now we're gonna get changed real quick. Let's see what's outside. Now we're gonna get, oh, no view to the outside. Opaque. It's okay though, we don't need that. <laughs> now we're gonna get changed and we're gonna go outside. We're gonna take a bus, bus to, um, I think it's called Molino Viejo. Charco Molino Viejo. I've never, we went to the other Charco that's walking distance from here. We wanna go to a new Charco. So we're gonna go take the bus, about 15 minute bus ride to the other Charco and swim and then later today we're gonna come back and hopefully it'll still be daylight where i can show you all the pueblo all right so stay tuned for that yeah stay tuned we'll be with you in a bit guys okay, so what i'm doing i'm gonna show you all the money i'm gonna leave this here uh in my bag the, this 50s just in case you know whatever happens out there but i'm taking 40 40 000 with tens one twenty thousand one two one five and then two hundred thousand of fifties right there just in case as nati says it's better to take a little bit more than expected than have not enough to pay. So that's what we're taking today. And uh, and I already told y'all this room costs 30,000, so that's deducted from the, the expense. And now we're gonna go get the bus. And I changed to my my charco, my swimming hole clothes. <laughs> Anyways, stay tuned. All right guys, so we're actually gonna go to a different charco. The one we went to, the first one we came three years ago, it's walking distance. It's about probably 30 minute walk, 20 minute walk. And one thing you gotta know, if you guys stay here, he doesn't give you the keys. He'll open the door for you. So we lock our, our hotel room, and when we get back, he'll open the door for us. So I guess it's 24 hour service, I'm not sure. But don't be surprised if that happens to you. Anyway, stay tuned. All right guys, this was called a shiva. But look at this, they're using the shiva to transport materials. 
Now you know you're in the true Colombian Pueblo when you see something like that, huh? So we're walking through the Pueblo and uh, getting into the Charco. So it's about, like I said, 25 minute walk. So this is what Barbosa looks like. Look at that awesome 4x4 Land Cruiser right there. You can find these everywhere. Colombia, especially Antioquia. And then of course the Pueblo dog. <laughs> Let's go. Guys, check out this house. I don't know what this is, but I don't know if y'all can see the uh, the stage right there with the angels. So pretty. I don't think it's a hotel. I think it's someone's house is very, very, very exceptionally very religious. <laughs> that is cool. Nice. All right, guys. We continue. We continue. I'm starving. I haven't eaten breakfast or lunch yet, and I smelled that chicken. There was some chicken, uh, rotisserie chicken back there. So, but I'm gonna wait to the Charco because I think in the Charco they have fried fish, and I love fried fish here in Colombia. Let me know in the comments who also loves fried fish. You gotta be careful with these motorcycles. Pero, Nati, yeah, this is nuevo. Se cae. Like they made a new uh, road there. They're developing this, this pueblo. Looks like it's new houses that way. I might have to come back and investigate another day by myself. Because I think uh, Nati's strong, but she doesn't, she doesn't have strong legs like me. Or she, I don't think she can put in 25,000 steps. See or no, Nati? <laughs> oh, look at this. Check this out, guys. This is called lechon. Lechona, see ¿sí or no? Si, sí, lechona. Sí. Muy rico. Quizá cuando regresamos, vamos a probar. Pero tiene que, tiene arroz dentro. Arroz, carne, eh, tocino, pescado. Ah, muy bien, rico. So this is lechona, guys. It has uh, rice, meat, and uh, tocineta, si ¿sí o no? No la prueba ni la que rezo. Si, la vamos a probar cuando regresamos. Seguro. Gracias, señor. That's one of my favorites, and especially the um, the crispy skin. The crispy skin is so delicious, guys. So don't be afraid when you see a pig's head. It means deliciousness. It's nothing like uh, what's it called, Godfather, or nothing like that. <laughs> hey, todo bien, todo bien. <laughs> good people, good times. Bueno, y'all stay tuned. I'll turn the camera off. Something interesting happens. Stay tuned. Let me know guys, who would take this car across Colombia, adventuring all the mountains? It's a, it's a Dahatsu, Dahatsu, huh. Super tiny, but I bet it's like a goat, I bet it's like a mountain goat. All right, so we're walking and I'm keeping, I'm, I'm keeping Nati behind because I'm, I'm filming here and showing you guys the, the town. Tell Nati, say thank you Nati for having patience with David because he's annoying when he's filming. <laughs> bueno, I want to buy me something to drink and also for Nati at this store here. Let's go in the store, check out everything you need. All the junk food that you can imagine. Buenas, esto bien? Ah, que rico, que es este? Galletas. El original. Ah. Bueno, tiene H2O? Si. Sí. Eh, que tamaño tiene? ¿Qué tamaño es esa? El eh, personal creo. De limón porfa. Así, ah, sí, dos porfa. Y tiene Pringles. ¿Cómo? Sí. Sí, qué tamaño. ¿Qué tamaño tiene? También tengo un poquito más pequeño o ya la grande. ¿Cuál es la pequeña? Me muestras. Everybody's super nice. Now hopefully this will come out because the music's playing. But this is a good clip. Because you guys get to see what a store looks like in uh, Colombia. Vamos a ver, que tamaño es? No, no, Pringles. Pringles. No sabes que es Pringles? Ah, son las papitas. Las papitas, si. Ah, tendí premio. No, no, no. <laughs> music everywhere in Colombia. Si tiene o no? Si. Ah, bueno, que sabor es? Ah, si esa. Esa, ese queso, porfa. ¿Y qué precio para pa los tres? ¿Y eso es qué? Guayaba. Mm, bocadillo. Ajá. ¿Y qué precio? Eh, este. No, ese, ese tres. Son cuatro. Son dos a cuatro. 
I'll be back, guys. Stay tuned. Hey guys, I'm not sure if that clip's gonna come out because the music was playing, and music plays everywhere in Colombia. But the cost was I bought two drinks, one can of Pringles, and it cost 12,400 pesos. I got the Pringles because Nati wanted them, so I'm a good, I'm one I stole you. I'm a good, uh, good boyfriend. I, at first, I told her no, because we're gonna go eat lunch. I'll ruin her appetite. But I said, you know what? She's having a lot of patience with me filming and looking a fool in the pueblo and everybody's looking at us like we're crazy. So I'll get her her Pringles, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, let's carry on. Ah, I'm actually having fun doing this pueblo. Oh, look, Nati just saved me because look at this dog poop. And she literally grabbed my arm and rescued me from uh, stepping in it. So maybe I need to bring her along on my videos more. <laughs> I like this old car. What kind of car is this? It's a Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi. No sé de qué. Nati's dodging the camera. She doesn't have faith in me. I know how to work the camera so she doesn't come out. No te preocupes, Nati. Oh, yeah, hey, ¿qué es este? Ah, es, es un, this is a cemetery right here, guys. Let's go check it out. Let's go see. So I can show you guys what cemeteries look like in Colombia. So a cemetery in Colombia, they use shelves. So back here, that's where they put the, the coffins in the shelves. And I want to tell you guys something very interesting about cemeteries here in Colombia. They, what happens is, say like one of our, my loved ones dies or whatever, someone dies, you do a funeral, you pay for the coffin, you pay for the funeral, and you pay for the spot uh, in the shelf to put the coffin in. And then, after four years of being buried there, that's what. ¿Cómo, cómo se llama ese? Eh, cuatro años, Nati. La qué? Okay, so I asked Nati what it meant, but she doesn't remember, and it's totally fine because we don't know everything in this world. Look at these shelves right there. Actually, no. This. So let me let me tell the story. Whoever knows what it's called at the fourth year, comment below. But at the fourth year, the family comes back to the big shelf. They pull out the coffin. They open it up. That way, the family can see the uh, remains for the last time. And then they cremate the body or the bones, basically bones by then. They cremate the bones and they put them, I guess here, I think, in these smaller shelves, I think. Or the family takes it home. I have no idea. Someone told me this a long time ago. I may be totally wrong. Whoever's Colombian, whoever knows what happens, let me know in the comments below. But that's, that's the gist of it, yeah? Anyways, we, can t we carry on. Here, I oh, almost died. I was walking backwards. Here in, Colum here in my channel, I give you guys as much information as I know. I know I'm not always correct. I don't know all the facts, but that's why we build a community to double check each other and help each other out, yeah? Anyways, let's go. All right, guys, we're still walking, but we got, we got the neighborhood chickens. There we go, all loose. Buenas. Como esto bien? Buenas tardes. Uh-huh. <laughs> She was telling us something, but I didn't, I didn't hear. But she seemed very friendly and laughing, and that's what I love. I love people like that. So hopefully when I get to her age, I'll still have my humor and be friendly and laughing and find uh, humor in life. I love it. Okay, so we're walking. We come to this main road, and we take a right. Don't tell me how I know. I feel it. I feel it in my heart. But you know, I, we walked the same route three years ago, so I remember. Okay. Let's continue. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. <laughs> a little baby. Yeah, it's so cute. Oh, it's so cute. Big as my hand. That's hilarious. Todo bien, buenas tardes. So it looks like they make uh, leather goods. Buenas tardes. They got, they got sandals, they got uh, saddle bags, they got saddles. Very cool. So if you guys need leather goods for your horse or for your feet, come here. Let them know I sent you. He only know me, but whatever. Let them know I sent you. <laughs> I love how they have chickens loose everywhere. I wonder who's who's in charge of going and collecting the eggs. So I bet the eggs are everywhere, you know. Unless they have a certain spot where they go roost or whatever. Hmm. Who do you, who do you guys think is uh in charge of collecting the eggs? Probably the kids, huh? Anyways, let's continue. Walking on this road, you gotta be very careful because the bus is coming around here very fast. So don't walk in the middle of the road. I'm walking on the side and Nati's walking like on the, in the ditch because uh, she's even being more precautious. 
But yeah, be very careful walking down this road getting into the shot code if you do walk. Or you can take a taxi from the town, but it's not that far of a walk. Just be careful. Look at this beautiful view of the mountains. That's one privilege of living here in Antioquia. You're always surrounded by beautiful green mountains. <laughs> Alright guys, we're coming to a crossroad. Here's the entrance here, but we're not right, really quite sure how to get in there. So let me ask. Bueno, esto bien. Eh, ¿Cómo llegar al charco brujo? Derecho. Bueno, gracias. ¿Y hasta, hasta dónde? Ahí se ve. Ahí se ve. Perfecto. Muchas gracias. So, I asked her, how do we get to the charco brujo? And she says, she said, that way. And I said, how do you, how do you know that you're going you're gonna to arrive? He says, she said, ahí se ve, which means you'll see it. <laughs> so let's see if we'll see it. Let's see. What kind of factory is this, I wonder? What do you guys think they, they make here? I'm guessing milk. I have no idea. I'm just guessing. Interesting. Okay, let's carry on. Maybe I'll see in the sign what they make and then we'll answer everybody's question. So I lied. Not everybody, not everybody doesn't know how to speak English. I'm walking by that girl that's passed by. She said, hello. So I said, buenas. She said, hello. So there you go. Maybe. Maybe you guys can get by uh, coming to Colombia without speaking Spanish. Maybe. But most likely, you'll have a better experience if you do speak Spanish. And if you check out the link below that pin below for the school that I think has the best program. Nice. Anyways, we carry on. Don't, here it says, do not enter with any firearms. So you guys with firearms, just keep those at home. All right, let's walk in the path. Oh, Lord. So much walking and so much talking, I'm telling y'all. All right, stay tuned. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a little break. <laughs> so whoever wants the literal translation of ahí se ve, I'm gonna show you guys what that means. Ahí se ve. Right in the front, directly in front, that's the charco. And that's what it means, ahí se ve. But look at this over here. Look at this over here. This beautiful entrance with these trees. Wow, that's beautiful. Why not? Wow, I love those trees. Okay, let's go back. I think Nati came in the clip a little bit, but I still work my magic, my camera magic, and we go around her. And ahí se ve la entrada del charco. Well, it doesn't say charco, but I remember this place. So he's walked straight. So really, in truth, ahí no se ve. Because I don't see anything that says charco. Maybe a little bit closer. Let's see. Guys, a bus just passed me and literally one foot from hitting my shoulder. So that's why I say be very careful. And I'm on the show, I'm on this white line. Literally almost hit me. So that's why I say be careful. These buses here are crazy. Just look up on YouTube, uh, bus accidents in Colombia. And I'm sure there's plenty of crazy uh, bus accidents in Colombia, I, I guarantee, in Spanish. Guys, here's an option for eating out here. We're not gonna eat yet, we're gonna go swim first, I think. Ah, Los Charcos. So here's a Los Charcos restaurant. So there we go. Buenas, todo bien? Perfecto. Vamos a nadar primero y luego regresamos. Perfecto. Muchísimas gracias. Muy amable. All right, guys. So let's go check out. See if se, ahí se ve. No, it says venta de tilapia. So for a kilo is 8,000 pesos and then for a chicken is 8,000 pesos for cada lin linea? Lina? I have no idea. There you go. If you need fish or you need chicken, you come here. Perdón? Cada uno. cale servicio. ¿Qué? Ah, moto taxi. No. ¿Qué? Nati. Allá no es el mensaje. Día por cada una. Ah, cada, un, cada una gallina. For each chicken, it costs 8,000 pesos. Pero es muerto o vivo, Nati? Quién sabe? No, we don't know if it's we don't know if it's alive or dead or cooked or what. But it's 8,000 pesos for one chicken. <laughs> All right. So this is like the little pueblo next to the charco. They must have one. Todo bien. I gotta stop saying buenas todo bien. Someone already corrected me. I need to start saying buenas tardes. So here we go. I need to start saying buenas tardes to la gente. Can y'all hear the river? Can y'all hear it? There it is, hold on. There's the Charco and people swimming over here. So we're gonna go closer. And the last time we came three years ago, this water was so 
ice cold. I'm telling you, probably like 40 degrees, maybe even 35 degrees. I'm not sure. I'll report back to you on a bit. But, oh, here we, aquí está el restaurante Nati antes. Pero ya no está, es mi casa. Creo que se fue de su casa. Se fue de su casa, porque ya no está. So that was the restaurant we ate last time and it was delicious. They had it with a wood burning stove and everything. But it looks like they went back home, I'm not sure. Oh, they're not working today. But this is, uh, this weekend's at Un Puente, which is a three-day weekend. It should be packed here, but Nati está muy vacío, ¿sí o no? For Un Puente, mejor. Yeah, we don't like that many people around. Well, especially for this, what we're going through. Ah, Nati, aquí no estaba esa arena. Estaba más profundo, ¿sí o no? Algo pasó acá. So before, this used to be a lot deeper here. Yeah, it used to be a lot deeper here, but it looks like uh, they had a, I don't know what happened here. They put sand. I have no idea. But we're gonna go check it out and find out for you. Yeah, because they see the slide. There's a slide there. It used to be real deep. They slide, they slid down, and they fell into deep water. Huh. Maybe that's the reason why nobody's here, because it's not deep anymore. And there's a slide too from the hotel. Coming to deep water, but it looks like you fall right into the rocks. Let's go check it out. Vamos a investigar Nazi. Vamos a investigar. I know what happened here. This is called El Charco del Brujo. So the, El Brujo means a uh, witch, but, um, a guy witch. A wizard, I guess, a wizard. So maybe the wizard worked some magic and took away all the water or put all these rocks here for some reason. And I remember here is where we, we pay for them to watch our stuff. But they're gone too. Huh. I don't know, you guys tell me in the comments what y'all think. What y'all think, what y'all's opinions. Would y'all come here? Looks like it's not very deep, that's the problem. I wanted to get in deep water. Here is super shallow as well. Hmm. Anyways, stay tuned. Buenas, ¿cómo estás? Eh, una pregunta, ¿qué pasó con el charco? ¿Por qué está con toda esa arena? Creció muchísimo la quebrada no, de noche. Sí, ah, fue, la, fue ayer que este pasó. Ante noche, sí, señor. Sí. Porque antes estaba más profundo, ¿sí o no? Claro, claro, o sea, fue ante noche que bajó una creciente, pero espantó. ¿En serio? ¿Pero se puede nadar acá? Sí, claro, se puede, ahí se, se puede cantar, la, se, se, se puede, claro. Ah, bueno, bueno. Se puede. Muchas gracias. Bueno, so, this happened. What he just told me was that this happened just last night. The river grew because it was raining all night last night here in, uh, in, in this part of Colombia. The river grew and brought all the rocks and sand down from the mountain and filled up this whole thing. Because that used to be super deep. I don't know what they're going to do. Uh, let me ask them. Hey, señor. Hey, ¿qué, va, ¿Qué van a hacer con esa arena? ¿Lo van a quitar con palos o qué? Esa arena mucha parte... Hey, yo, mami, esa arena mucha parte que barrela para abajo. Sigue, sigue yendo. Sí, la que sigue yendo porque la que le pongan una compuerta y le dice que le vaya. Ah, poco a poco. Sí, pues claro. No, más bien hay que tratar de que balar lo más que Si es por si mañana se hace un convite mañana por mañana. Ah, bueno. Con la misma agua la colocamos aquí ya en la valla. Ajá. Ah, muy bien, muchas gracias. Gracias. So, so he said that the river itself will actually take the, 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 the sand and the rocks away by itself, little by little. And then he said some other stuff that I didn't really understand, so if you guys understood, comment below, let me know. Anyways, I guess we're gonna try to swim here, I'm not sure, we'll see. All right guys, so Nati and I, we had a, a conversation and we came to an agreement that because the Charco is kind of ruined with its uh, rocks and its sand and it's not deep anymore, it only goes like, like below your waist, it's not worth it because that water is so cold that you need to get all the way in to get used to it. If you're only getting your legs in, you're going to be suffering all the time. So we're going to go eat uh, tilapia right here, the restaurant we walked by. And then tomorrow, and then no, sorry, we're going to go eat and then we're going to go back to the Pueblo. I'm going to show you guys the Pueblo, the church that got so we're going to walk around. So stay tuned for that or it might be the next video. I have no idea. We'll see. Stay tuned. All right, guys. So this is what the Charco should look like. You notice this guy right here, he's about to jump in, probably gonna dive into this part here. This part here is super, super deep. But obviously, what happened with the storm last night brought all the rocks and sand from the mountain and totally filled it up. 
whatever. But we just ordered, I got tilapia, tilapia fried, and Nati got the same thing as me. So we're gonna eat, then we we'll go back to the Pueblo. Stay tuned. I'll show you the food, stay tuned. All right guys, so we're waiting for the food still, and Nati noticed this sign that's actually kind of funny. So let me, let me show y'all real quick. Right here, it says, it says, si, si, si sientes un gran vacío, coma, es hambre. So basically in English, what that means is, if you feel a great emptiness, I guess like a great emptiness inside, eat, like with exclamation points, eat, because it's hambre, it's, it's, it's hunger. <laughs> so like all the people like that feel that deep emptiness inside that wants to search for something special or whatever, no, just go ahead and get some food because you're probably just hungry. Anyways, wait for the food, here it comes. All right guys, so we got what's called a bandeja paisa, but with the tilapia. So we have, we have, beans we have a fried egg we have salad probably got rice underneath the egg most likely maduro arepita and then tilapia fried delicious and i think i think nati got a bigger one a bigger fish so most likely i'm going to switch with her because my fish is not as big it's not fair are they favoring the colombian over here huh <laughs> All right, guys, I want to eat. It's so, it looks good. I'm starving. I had breakfast, no lunch, no nothing. So stay tuned. Guys, word of advice. When you're eating a fish like this, you got to be very careful because they have bones. And these bones, when you take a bite of the meat, it can have one of those very sharp bones in the meat. So don't eat fast. Take a bite. Chew gingerly to find the bones and then take them out. Because I guarantee, if you eat fast, you're gonna choke on a bone. And this is probably the reason why you don't see much of this in the States. Because in the States, if that was to happen to somebody in a restaurant, lawsuit. Here in Colombia, people just know not to do that. And if they do it, it's like they take it upon themselves. It's their fault, not the restaurant's fault. Anyways, word of advice. Let me keep eating. I'm almost done. Stay tuned. Here's the kitchen to the restaurant, guys. Check it out. That's so cool. But check this out, too. Yeah. I always thought when I saw a bucket like this, it was milk, but it's not milk, it's mazamorra. Right here, this is like the old bucket they used to carry milk in, right? But right inside, that's mazamorra. So when you see, when you see people in the, in the city yelling, mazamorra, that's what they're selling. And that's corn, it's maize, and the liquid is actually the juice from the corn, I believe. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Anyway, stay tuned. So the two tilapias that we had, the big massive meals, both together was 44,000 pesos. So that's 22,000 pesos each. Came with the drink and everything. So just, there's deducting for my, my total value, my total money that I brought. Anyway, stay tuned. Guys, check out this other car. So this is a Land Cruiser as well, but I bet you can buy it real cheap. Look at it. You can buy this real cheap and fix it up and send it back to the States. Josh, if you're watching, Josh, tell me in the comments, what do you think? Should we buy it? <laughs> All right, stay tuned. All right, guys, so got some chicle, which means gum. Tried it, tried it, and it cost us 1,002. Mil que? 700. 1,700 pesos. So deduct that from my total. All right, let's go, let's carry on. We're walking back, and it's actually quite nice to walk back because that meal was massive. So it's kind of digest the fish. Anyways, we're going back to Pueblo. Stay tuned. <laughs> 